So some of our sort of general rules that we can say is that the posterior forearm is associated with radial innervation, anterior forearm with median, the palm uh, or the intrinsic muscles of the hand with the ulnar. The exceptions to these rules include for the posterior forearm, there are no exceptions. For the anterior forearm, we have one and a half muscles, car flexor carpillaris and the medial half of flexor digitorum profundus, and they will be innervated by the ulnar. When it comes to the palm, the only exceptions are going to be those thenar muscles and also the lateral two lumbricals, which will be innervated by the median. So this little overview helps us to kind of remember the innervation, but it's useful to note that there are some variations associated with differential innervation and also that the deep head of flexor pollicis brevis is actually technically innervated by the ulnar. So that generally is preserved in the median nerve damage. We can remember the muscles that are innervated by the median by thinking one half loaf, so half the lumbricals, and then L for, for a lumbrical, OAF for the muscles in the thenar eminence. So we'll now consider the innervation of the hand. So we'll draw in for the palmar aspect here to start off the ulnar nerve and the median nerve. And we'll note some of its features. So here we can see a, a lighter area. This represents where it's passing under the flexor retinaculum and it's going to branch into a medial and a lateral branch. So from our lateral branch there, we can see we have a small curving back branch. We'll come back to that. And the rest of the branches coming off our medial and lateral are going into the digits. And we have names for these. So when we talk about them here, there'll be common palmar digital nerves. And then the common palmar digital nerves will run up towards the, the interspaces or the webs between the fingers, and they'll divide into proper palmar digital nerves. So it's those proper palmar digital nerves that run in the, the finger. And if you follow them, you can see that they actually extend over the top of the pads of the finger and into the nail beds on the other side. And you may ask why that happens. Why are they innervating the dorsum? And the reason is embryology. So embryologically, your nails actually started on the palmar side of your fingers and they migrated around. So they just carried their innervation with them as they went. One last thing to note here is, here's our flexor retinaculum in place. And you'll note that this palmar branch here is superficial to it. So this is the branch I was talking about that's preserved in the case of severe carpal tunnel syndrome. So you can imagine that the area of skin that it supplies will not be affected by the paresthesia, which you'll feel in the rest of the distribution of the, the median nerve. So if we now add the ulnar nerve to the dorsum of the hand, we can see it here. And then the rest of the hand, this portion here is innervated by the radial. So we'll add it to the picture. And these nerves that you see in the dorsum have a name. These are the dorsal digital nerves of the hand. Um, and you can follow them up into the, the fingers. So I have circled these two nerves here, and this is because these are motor nerves, and they're going to dive deep to supply the thenar eminence and the hypothenar eminence, as well as some other muscles. So if we can name them for the ulnar nerve here, this deep branch is literally just called the deep ulnar nerve, or deep branch of the ulnar. And this branch here associated with the median is called the recurrent branch of the median. So the recurrent branch of the median, you can see how it gets its name. It runs, it tends to run back in the direction it came from to enter the thenar eminence. If we add some of these muscles to the picture, so you can appreciate the your thenar eminence and it's diving in there deep between your abductor and your flexor, pollicis brevis. Now the vasculature is centered around two arches, a deep one and a superficial one. Each arch is fed by both the ulnar and the radial artery. And this helps to preserve blood supply in case anything is narrowed or if a, if a hand is left in a certain position for a long time. If we draw here a more slightly more complicated view and try to name these arteries, we'll start off with the ulnar artery. So our ulnar artery is going to continue down here, dividing into a deep branch. Okay, so there's our deep branch. And then it'll continue along, helping to form this superficial palmar arch. So this is it here. The superficial palmar arch is going to give you some branches called common palmar digital arteries. So these are those. And when those common palmar digital arteries meet the interspace, the web there between the finger, they'll divide into our proper palmar digital arteries. So these will run alongside the nerves. If we now look at the radial artery, so here's the radial artery, we can appreciate, you know, you could take the pulse here um, on the anterior aspect, it then winds around into the anatomical snuff box, and then it comes back into the palmar aspect by passing through this first interspace. But when it does so, it is quite deep, and this is how it helps to contribute to the deep arch. So before it gives uh, that, that twisting winding course, it'll leave off a branch here in the wrist, and this is the superficial branch, 
and if you follow it that superficial branch it'll join up with the superficial palmar arch so it helps to form the arch it's the other leg of the arch the rest of the radial artery as we said is going to wind through the snuff box it's going to pass through a muscle here so this would be the first dorsal androsseous muscle and at that stage then it anastomoses with the deep branch of the ulnar forming the deep palmar arch some of the the branches that we have coming off on this aspect of our, our radial artery as it continues to form the deep arch are the princeps pollicis so this is here it's helping to spy the thumb and the radialis indices so this is here and we also have some metacarpal branches for the rest of the the digits so we can see those as well so we'll look now at some pictures just to show what this looks like in a slightly more detailed view with the muscles intact so in this view we've removed the palmar aponeurosis and you can see immediately pretty much the superficial arch and there it is and if you follow it back you can see it's mostly originating here from the ulnar artery and if you were to continue continue around this superficial branch here is going to be from the radial artery which is just there we're going to have to remove some muscles to see the deeper arch so we'll get this deeper dissection here so a lot of the muscles have been cut away and what you can see here the first dorsal androsseus you can see the radial the continuation of the radial passing through its heads so that will be our deep palmar arch mostly originating from this radial artery so we're just going to briefly mention some of the vessels on the dorsum of the hand so there's less tissue here so it's a less extensive a blood supply but it's worth mentioning so the dorsal car carpal network here is fed by our radial artery or ulnar artery which is behind here and also the interosseous arteries that we would have reaching the wrist and the, the network is going to give rise to dorsal metacarpal arteries so you can see them here and those uh, arteries are going to divide when they reach the interspace the web between the fingers into dorsal digital arteries and you'll find that those will anastomose with our proper palmar digital arteries those ones here which were branches of the common palmar digital coming from the superficial palmar arch so what this means and the reason i mention it is that if you were to look at a cross section of the finger you would find two palmar arteries and two dorsal arteries as well 